Welcome everybody! Thank you so much for clicking on this video. It is one of a little bit of highs and lows, a test of patience, and uh, yeah, who's going to win the fight? My inability to save these orchids or their resilience and willingness to survive. So, one we haven't seen for a long time. This is my Doria Deanopsis purple gem, Aida. And she went downhill in 2020, early summer, because of scale. I honestly thought it was stem rot. It had the similar signs of stem rot, but I wasn't spraying around the base. So I was very confused until I thought, right, it's time to go in, let's check her out and I could see all the scale around the base. And since then, she has been in rescue mode. So over a year in this setup of a cut soda bottle with hob filter material to simulate sphagnum moss and give me humidity. And here we are. I have actually got two pieces of her because she was doing so well. She was growing little plantlets around the base and blooming beautifully until that happened. But here we are. Over a year later, I've still got her in the setup. There's always a little bit of water here of the base of the bottle, humid environment. And normally on this piece, I have a little lid on her to keep the humidity levels much, much higher. Doing well. And let me tell you, if this was spring and not winter of 2021, I would be potting her up. This is not the time in my experience with my environment, yeah, that would guarantee her demise to a T. So for the next six to seven months, I will be still having her in this setup. Oh, but I'm glad I still have her to deal with. And she's looking so much better. Let's look at piece number two. And as I move her away, <laughs> we've got quite a lot of ground to go her. So I'm going to not try and make this too long. But again, thank you for being here. And if you choose to stay to the end, thank you for your time in advance. Here, same thing. This was the little plantlet that came out of the side of her. And I've got roots growing as well. Gosh, it's taken forever. And I don't want to take her out. So I, I hope you can see beyond the reflection. But this is the little plantlet that has kind of doubled in size since it went into this setup. There's hope, there's hope for my Doria Teanopsis purple gem, Aida. Okay, so on to the next ones. Hmm. This was a beautiful Zelemnia Midas. Beautiful big orchid, had her in a basket with lava rock, and she bloomed beautifully. She did really well until one day as well. I wasn't happy with what I was seeing, so I took her apart and she fell into two pieces. Suddenly, her vigor was gone. Everything that she was doing was lost. And here are the two pieces since summer of 2020. I'm getting new roots. The little fans that are left are hydrating nicely. They don't have any anthocyanin because I'm protecting these pieces from harsh light. I don't want to add to the stress that they're already going through. Oh, by no means is this one ready to pot up at all, so we are still going to baby them. Now, because their base is much smaller, their fans and everything so much more tighter, as we are in winter, I have taken the top off, so there's a lot more aeration in this setup. Next up, oh, <laughs> Brassavola little stars. Same thing, a lot of scale hit her after we did a care collab. And then I just took her apart. She disintegrated before my eyes in my hands, just completely fell apart. And if it wasn't for the channel, I would have ditched her a long time ago. Now, since then, <laughs> she's grown that little growth around the sides. I don't have still any roots at all. She's trying, if I can show it properly, Right there at the base, there's a little bit of a, like a little eye, but there is some action with another growth, but look at her, two needles. Um, I don't think this one's gonna make it, but for the sake of the channel, I'm keeping it, and I hope all of that was in focus. I know it's difficult through my little containers here, but I don't wanna be taking this out because <laughs> I am a little bit on the klutz 
side. So if I move it and break this growth off, any chances of her finding the energy to do anything at all will be right out the window. So I hope that this was somewhat clear. Anyway, what's really clear here is uh, not doing very well at all. And I have two more pieces of my Nanipua Keo Dogashima. These all were from the piece that has already been potted up and was split because there were little signs of fusarium. So you can see that it's pushing another new growth right here, but there's a very, very pathetic show of root nubbins there. They're not even extending. So there's this one piece. I'm losing a needle back here or a leaf. Right now I call them needles because look at them, super dehydrated. I am going to soak them once more in just CalMag and seaweed overnight. Very, very weak solution, not even 100 parts per million, probably 50 parts per million, 25 seaweed, 25 CalMag, and just submerge them in that tub overnight and let them dry again. I'm waiting for this growth to be a little bit more hardened before I do that because again, time of year, not so good when it comes to having things all wet. So that's that one piece. And then I have another piece of the Nanipuakea Dogashima right here. This was actually the healthiest part, I thought, because it had viable roots, which after the fusarium treatment completely died on me. And here is now a new growth coming. Same thing, it's gonna get one of those soaks. Once this new growth has a little bit more substance to it, so yeah, Nanipua Kiev Dogashima, I still have two pieces to go. They haven't died on me yet, and they had a lot of scale issue as well, which I've dealt with. No sign of pests left. Then we go to a row of Dendrobium Berryoda keikis. Now, I have a row of them because this one I took off very prematurely because you can see how the new leaves died back. But what I wanted to test here was to see how soon can I remove a Dendrobium berryoda keiki while the roots were still at nubbin stage and hadn't locked themselves into any of the leaf apexes of the mother plant. So that is the reason I've got this little experiment going and I can't pull it out either because some roots have grown into the hob material and you can see some nubbins are starting to continue to grow. For a moment there, I thought I had lost it because I really did take it off very, very early stages, but it is fighting to come back to life. And these roots are a great, great sign. The other pieces that I took off, they were much, much mature, many, many more roots, and I'm growing them on in just pure water culture, no hob material at all. And yeah, well, some roots you can see are aerial on one piece, which is annoying, but at least I have a few that are touching the water on occasions. So these obviously much, much mature. They've also managed to stay green in their leaves. And for now, they're just going on in water culture because I've never ever grown in water culture. And I wanted to give it a go using these keikis that were already on the mature side. The next little piece that I have here is also another very, very premature little baby. And I've done sort of a reverse bottle kind of setup. You can see, turn the bottle upside down, use the neck as my support. And one of these cups is serving as the reservoir. I took this one off also very prematurely and you can see because of the higher humidity in the dome here, as opposed to here, unless I had put a lid on it, the leaves actually grew out and are still green and roots are starting to grow. So this was just a little bit of a different configuration with an extremely immature or prematurely removed Dendrobium berryoda keiki and it's working really, really well. I'm liking what I'm seeing. And finally, for this little I Still See You series, Haha, <laughs> this is my Catlianthe White Bridal Snow White, also with a dome on it. And this was the back piece I propagated off the mother plant because I wanted to test and see if something would happen despite there not being any, any roots. 
And look at that little eye down there swelling. That piece over there is the rhizome where I cut the front part of the orchid off and we've got an eye coming against all odds because there were no eyes at all on this piece. Here we are. Let's see if this has enough strength. I shouldn't see why it shouldn't have enough strength. It's just the time of year that makes me a little bit doubtful. But hey, it's trying. And then, surprise of surprises. This is my little Lelia Bloom and Shiny Eye. A little Rapiculus Lelia that I got as a three bulb plant early season. I'm gonna take it out because you won't believe it. When I was cleaning up the main plant for potting up, etc., I lost the little back bulb and I thought, mm, never in a million years is anything gonna come out of this. There was nothing. I was wrong. Isn't that amazing? One tiny little Rapiculus Lelia back bulb, no eye, and look at this. I love it. I absolutely love it. So it's been doing really, really well in this setup where I also keep quite a bit of water at the base. I make sure it stays out of bright light. And I've got this oversized, hang on a second, this way oversized dome on it, just because I don't want any jiggling or anything falling off like the other dome that just did. Isn't this remarkable though? I am not only surprised, but shocked. So that's my little Lelia Bloom and Shiny Eye. <laughs> I really hope it makes it. It deserves to make it. Has a little root nubbin growing, but yeah. Incredible, huh? And I have one more I want to show you. This is my Rapiculus Lelia Briageri, still from an order from February of 2021, which I received in May 2021 from Floralia. This is the last of those Lelias that have now found pots to actually get potted up. And it is still in kind of a tiding over rescue mode setup because look, I still don't have any real roots to speak of. So throughout the summer, I've had it in this very high humidity environment as well because of my very hot, dry, no humidity summers. But now that it is winter, this is too much and I will be taking it out and putting it back into a Greek yogurt tub without any water at the base so that it will always get a kind of a wet, dry cycle. Growths coming out of the wazoo. I mean, for real but no roots. So this is not really struggling, it's just not growing roots. I've lost one back bulb, but that is not even an issue. It's just incredible that this one, maybe I should get some secateurs, I'll cut that off before I put it back, but <sighs> incredible. I am waiting for root nubbins, and there, I do have viable roots here, but to put it into a pot right now, that would be asking for trouble. So into a Greek yogurt tub it goes again until such a time that I get root nubbins. So we've had a little bit of a rundown of all my, what I consider, I see you. I still see you. I hope to see you recover. Many ways of being able to play with the letters I see you. But yeah, quick rundown, update. It's been a while. There's plenty of positive signs in there to keep me hopeful. <sighs> my little Brassabola little stars. Mm. Oh well, we'll keep trying. Hope this was of interest to you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition. Please stay safe and take care. Bye!